Ooh. Hey guys, welcome back to new video. Hello. I'm here with Sammy and in our last video together, we filmed some like pre and post workout snacks and obviously our pancakes. So I will put a, a link to the recipes and our last video down below as well. But for today, we wanted to do a little Q&A. Yeah, just have some fun with you guys while we eat these pancakes that have been staring at us. <laughs> you also can take some food at home and just eat with us if you like. <laughs> Otherwise, we're just gonna do a little mukbang. I am starving. I am too. Mm. You know what's the best part? This is the blueberry. That topping, amazing. So good. Is your favorite like breakfast meal? Probably. Yeah? Mm hmm Pancakes are like something that just sits well with me. <laughs> what's your favorite breakfast? I love them too. I think, so I would go for savory, like a, a big bowl with like eggs and bacon, and, mm. you know. That is so good sourdough too. Sourdough bread and butter, mm. that's it. So we asked you guys on Instagram <laughs> to send in some questions. So I think we're just gonna go one by one and pick Let's a do couple. It. If you don't follow us on Instagram yet, then now is the time to do it. Do you wanna start off with one? Sure. Okay, this one's for you. Cause I feel like we should ask different ones, not like I'm answering the same ones every time, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, go for it. I don't really care, I don't know. Okay, a healthy tip that changed your healthy lifestyle. So I think it means like a healthy tip that changed mm. your journey to maybe be easier or... Yeah, I think actually, cause like I know a lot of people would say like, yeah, drink more water, I was more exercising more. I think at one point when I was living in New York City and I was traveling so much and I was, I was like, oh my God, working out, I love working out, I need to be on top of this five times a week. I was just putting way too much pressure on my body mm -hmm. and like it can work against you when you're working out too much that your body receives that as stress, which is really right. not healthy. So I feel a very healthy tip for me is to find balance between like, working out, resting, also doing fun things with friends and like, you know, when you're on a party indulging and like mm -hmm. eating maybe sometimes like, I don't know, I hate cheat meals, but like eating some like delicious food. So I think that has been like my biggest health tip to like trying to find that balance. Mm -hmm. And I know it's really hard, but it's just by trying things out, different yeah. things what work for you. I love that. I feel like that's where the patience comes yeah. in because it is a little bit of a trial and error and see what works for you. And yours? I feel like mine was like so similar because it is so much about like trial and error, but. I think actually a lot of people have difficulties with motivation. So if you can give a tip on that. For motivation, I feel like there's like definitely one, two, three steps that I can give you of like having an accountability partner, scheduling it in, prioritizing it. Those are like the basics. But I think really what it comes back to is being super self-aware of why do I feel like I'm not motivated? Is it because this task seems way too big? Is it because I don't like that type of workout? Is it because, you know, because there's so many different types of workouts that I think it goes back to the trial and error, just like any types of foods you're eating. You want your journey to slightly be enjoyable because it's gonna turn into a lifestyle. Slightly, you wanna <laughs> make it enjoyable. There's so many different types of workout. I know Sana loves to do Pilates. And you know, for me, I love Pilates too, but I feel like I know that what works for me the most. Like you kind of just have to figure out what really yeah. sets well with you and it gets you excited. Finding your journey, guys. <laughs> this one has been asked a lot actually. How did we meet? So my friend Whitney, I met in Coachella and I texted her one day like, hey, I'm probably gonna move out to LA and I'm, I'm looking for someone who is into fitness and can like maybe help with, to create some like videos for like YouTube and stuff. And then she <laughs> brought Sammy. She was like, yeah, my friend Sammy can, can help us out. And we did like a workout thing together. And then that's, that's how. <laughs> that's how it all rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Tips on making friends slash connections. I really love that. Because I've traveled everywhere in a way, it, it's, it's hard to every time make friends again. And I, I'm gonna be very honest, prior moving to LA, I was kind of like nervous about it because mm -hmm. Max and I were often like hanging out with the boys too. And I was like, oh my God, like, am I gonna have like really close girlfriends, you know? And I was like, for me, that's so important. Thank God, yes, Yay. I found and many, <laughs> many more. And I honestly have been so lucky as well to just like meet all of you guys. But I think a very good tip would be is like, you're not gonna get friends mm -hmm. out of the blue. You, you need to get out of your comfort zone and take action too. Like, 
if you're like, oh, nobody asked me to do anything, like, why don't you hit up that, not stranger, but maybe a person you kind of know from school mm -hmm. or in classroom, like, hey, do you want to grab a coffee? I always feel like FaceTiming people it brings a certain mm -hmm. connection because I obviously now it's not as easy to just grab coffee instead of just like texting or DMing, whatever. But I think take more of the first steps. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, friendships, it's an effort in the beginning, especially because. In the beginning. Yeah, yes. in the beginning. You'll start to like, after be like, okay, they get me, they know my, they know who I am, so if I don't reply, it's okay. It's true. Yeah. I feel like for me, honestly, I'm a little more introverted until I feel comfortable and mm -hmm. then I'm extroverted. And so, really pushing myself out of that comfort zone. But what I found was like a game changer for me was through social media because you comment on maybe a girl in your neighborhood, whatever it is, send her a DM, compliment her, you know, show her that you're yeah. you're interested in like who she is. I really like that. And I it's crazy when you let it all go of being like, this is weird, I'm commenting on someone I don't know. They actually really love it too and then you guys end up connecting and talking about something which then yeah. can develop a friendship. I really like that. Yeah. yeah. I've yeah, had that, to do that. That's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I mean, yeah, it's just about taking action in that, in that sense, I would yeah. say. Okay, this is a question, I think, from Maggie, Maggie Liz. I think it's Maggie. How many times per week should I train myself to become fit like you girls? So I think this is also, it really depends for each person. Yeah. So I used to train like five times a week, but I really noticed that now I'm training maybe three to four times a week, and the other days I'm just basically stretching because I kind of had like an injury and stuff and I just noticed like I'm just so fragile I just like get injured <laughs> so fast and I need to listen to my body here uh -huh. so I think I go three times a week pretty hard and then the other days now I do more like stretching I have to comment I mean on it's what... your job <laughs> this, so it, is, it like... is it is and I have to even comment on what she said because it's so important I remember when I used to do like heavier lifting when I was younger and it was just not working for my body. My body felt stressed, it felt inflamed. It just was not working for me personally. And I remember someone told me like, hey, you're a violin and that girl's a drum. And like, she just meant that like, she can handle that workout and then you're more gentle and need a different type of workout. And I was like, I am a violin. <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> no, but she just, meant, right. she just meant like, do the workouts that work for you um, guys, you know? Yeah. like. Not everyone has to be doing the same thing to make it work. So I love that you're super aware of that. Yeah. For me, I work out six times a week just because it is my lifestyle and my job. But really, I only do 35 to 40 minutes. I first thought too, I was like, oh, wow, you at least do like an hour a day. But like, yeah. I was so surprised when you first said that. No, I really found like before in my life, I think I would work out, go to the gym for that full hour. And now I've really just learned what works for my body. My body's like, this clicked, the 35, 40 minutes, it feels good. And then definitely adding in yoga once a week is, yeah. is a must. I like this one. Your favorite quote. Honestly, the first thing that comes to my head, I'm not like someone that like lives by a certain quote. When I see them, I'm like, love it. But I think that's something I just tell myself that I like is you are worthy. Mm -hmm. I feel like that just sits well with me. I like that. <laughs> what about you? Mm. There's this one quote from Pippi Longs Longstock. Mm -hmm. It says, I've never done it, so I think I can do it. Mm. So it basically means that like, kind of the, the unknown or things you've never done it, that you are fully confident like, well, Never Try it, it. just do, do it. it. <laughs> and I, I don't know, I just really like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Do you guys ever deal with bloating? Yes. <laughs> so, wow. I definitely deal with bloating. I really recognize it for sure when I'm that time of the month, it like, it's, like, it's like gonna happen. But also to certain foods that I eat, mm -hmm. automatically will do it for me and I just kind of like realize it and then Eat yeah. it again. Sometimes you know if it's if you have if you're super bloated, you just need to be like, okay, yeah. This is it. I mean, if it is a constant problem, like really bad, which I had for a while, you, you might do like a food allergy test or something like that, or an elimination diet. Mm -hmm. If you have bloating sometimes from time to time, like it's completely normal. And I also know I remember a friend of mine came back from Sweet Green. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Oh, every time I've eaten Sweet Green I have such like a bloated stomach. And I'm like, if you put a big salad on a plate it is so big of course it's gonna so be big. hard for your stomach to digest mm -hmm. like obviously it's like this is the thing healthy foods can also cause bloating like sana said if it was something that was ongoing definitely go get some type of test or talk to your doctor about it but if it's just here and there 
I just usually drink a lot of water to help it like kind of flood yeah, out. Me too. <laughs> and I sometimes, it's, this sounds really weird, I take a cold shower, I always feel oh, better. I don't know that. if that has something to do with it, but I do feel kind of uh, better, so I think it's important too. I like that. How did you learn to be confident in your own skin? Ooh. It's just a hard one because it's like a really amazing question that I think a lot of girls yeah. go through. I mean, I think first of all, the stop comparing yourself to others has a really big role. Like mm -hmm. you need to be like happy with yourself. And I know this is extremely hard because social media, you see other people, but you just need to tell yourself really like that that's not reality. And those people are also always showing their self mm -hmm. on their best angle or whatever. I know that it's pretty hard to stop comparing yourself. You just need to own it whatever body type you're ha mm -hmm. you, you have. Like every body is beautiful. Even I feel, cause I'm very tall. So I would like yes. cringe and like stand like this. And I'm like, why am I doing that? You yeah. know, like you need to be more like open. Well, that's the main thing too. I feel like everyone goes through it. They're all, we're all like nitpicking ourselves, right? We're all like, I'm too tall, I'm too short, I'm too this. It's like we all can relate to that, having yeah. compassion towards yourself. There was a quote you posted, which I really liked, mm. or little message, which was actually like, I love if how you, you think about, yeah, I saw that and I was like, that's really true. It's like, I need to tell this on YouTube now. <laughs> Maybe we can pop it up later here too, or put it in the description, but it basically was saying, at the end, you know what it is? People are gonna remember you by your smile, by your energy, by the positive, words like mm -hmm. the things you're saying and they're not going to remember you just because of your body or like yeah. how you look and i think that is so so extremely important i think it's also always mm -hmm. important to be kind nice and positive because you know those are the people you want to surround yourself with and not like the people who have like most beautiful body and that, yeah. you know it's just like i think that that I, I think about and i was like that's a really good one i agree and like reading something like that every day can just really help you like mm -hmm. remember like oh yeah I'm gonna put it down. It's, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll put it here. It's also on my yeah. feet. It's so good. Words of affirmation to yourself too is so important. I think we treat other people better than we sometimes treat ourselves. Of mm -hmm. you know, giving those kind words yeah. to you can also just really make you believe in yourself. So what you're saying can build that confidence over time. I mean, I have to tell myself stuff all the time, but it feels good because you really believe it, and then you remember that's how it really is. Yeah. And maybe also do the other way, like comment a close friend of yours mm -hmm. and just, you know, help each other out in, in that way. I like this one too. Mm. How do you deal with bad energies slash toxicity or anxiety around you? I think this is a very, mm. you know, serious question. And I know that we all struggle, I feel, with some kind of like anxiety. It might be big, might be small yeah. or something. And I think especially during like these times, you know, with the whole lockdowns happening and mm -hmm. stuff and just like the uncertainty, I feel that's really hard for a lot of people. I think how I deal with it is sometimes I literally just like, when it happens in a moment, I lay down on my carpet and I just take <laughs> literally like this and I take three deep breaths. I think mm -hmm. breathing is like one of the most important things, but I think it's very important too to, in that moment, to. Yeah to think about the fact, what was the trigger of you getting that anxiety? You know, might that be a change in your schedule? Might that be something what the person mm -hmm. said? Or might that be, I don't know, whatever can give you anxiety. Like finding out the root yeah. cause of it. So then for the next time you can like solve it. Yeah. So it isn't an ongoing thing. I think yeah. that. I try CBD sometimes too, kind mm -hmm. of like it. Mm -hmm. I don't do you see? I used to a little bit, but not as much anymore. But I, I like the cream version for like yeah, the soreness really and good. stuff. But yeah, I think everyone, again, it's something that everyone goes through, just in different levels. I'm curious, what do you really, when anxiety comes up, what do you feel? What, what goes through your mind or your body? I'm very curious. I feel like when I feel anxiety, I feel like panicky. So I feel like nervous energy very panicky, like scattered a little bit. Like yeah. it doesn't feel, I don't feel centered in myself. I don't feel still, I feel very scattered. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna say breathing is my number one. Like I saw someone do it where you like breathe in and then breathe out and you like do it along oh. all five of the fingers. I thought that was pretty cool. What do you feel when you feel anxious? I immediately feel it here in my chest, kind yeah. of like, no, no, a little pressure. Mm -hmm. And my shoulders immediately start to hurt like, I pulled something mm. in my back. It's that's really strange. So it's kind of like a tension. That's how I'm feeling. So for me, it's just kind of often it happens when I'm like moving around a lot through the apartment or in travel and stuff. I get it a lot on airports. I always get like 
a little anxious for some reason. Yeah. It's just like the whole security with the packing your stuff and like yeah. always on time and like I'm scared to like miss my flight because I've done that like too many times right. and just like, I don't know. I went out yesterday, had to get a hair appointment and do more errands than I've done, I guess. And I felt this nervous energy of just Corona and quarantine, I guess. Yeah. And it was like, it, I could feel it like, I was just feeling nervous energy and I didn't, I was like, whoa, this feels really funny. So I just sat in my car and took a sec yeah. because I could feel it. <laughs> a stranger was probably coming by. You were like, send me like... in this car and I go. <laughs> do you track calories? Oh my gosh, I got that one a lot too. Yeah. For me, I do not personally count calories. I have a lot of friends who do, so I totally understand. Over time, I've just learned how much my body needs in a day. How I kind of learned that was research and kind of seeing other people of healthy options that they host and I would take mm -hmm. those on and I would see if I felt too full, if I felt gross after. You kind of just have to be super intuitive of what's going on with your body when you're eating those certain foods or meals that you're trying. Yeah. And then over time it's just gonna click. You're gonna understand how much you need. So I intuitive eat now where I know what my body is craving or what it needs, how much food throughout the day. I always feel a bit like calories don't really say anything because high calories, I'm like, yeah, an avocado and it's yeah. also high calorie and it's so healthy, you know, mm -hmm. like you can better eat an avocado than like a snicker, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, calorie exactly. wise the same. I don't really do that. I think I try to have like carbs once or twice a day. So either for like yeah. breakfast and then maybe for lunch and then not for dinner or maybe just for dinner mm -hmm. or I don't really do like morning lunch and dinner yeah. all carbs. So that's kind of what I balance out a bit and then protein also like twice yeah. or once a day. I did like for a second try to count calories and I figured out my how many calories I do like to have in a day. Just understanding that which mm -hmm. is 2100 if anyone's interested. But I found that I didn't like being attached to the calories. I yeah. liked being more attached to what was inside the food, the ingredients, I think it's a which really good one. sometimes like you'll get something in like Sana said, an avocado is so amazing for you, but it's higher in calories. Yeah. So someone might not eat it, but it's so much better than that bag of chips that maybe is lower in calories. So for me personally, I, I definitely intuitively mm -hmm. eat. I'm not here to give advice on that, but yes, I just by experience. So we're both in a relationship. How long have you been in this? We had our three year in oh, yeah. May. Aww. How long have you guys? Two and a half. Aww. How long did you guys date until you moved in together? Only like three months. Really? Yeah, because my apartment in Middle East was up and I was looking for a place literally almost around the corner of Max. Mm. And it was actually Max roommates. Like Max and I hadn't discussed this yet. I already had it in my mind, I was like, I might as well just like <laughs> put my stuff in storage and move in. I was like, whatever. And then his roommate was actually the one who was like, hey, Sana, why don't you come live here? And like, oh Max's face gosh. was like, uh. But yeah, Wait, very, awesome. very soon. But the rent in New York is so expensive, right? It, it did like, not make any sense yeah. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what? How do you keep your armpits and other areas from looking dark? <laughs> I'm Colombian, so they probably are. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they're a little dark. <laughs> Own it. Okay, this might be a little personal, but are you on birth control and what kind? Mm -hmm. So I've tried like different things. I had like an IUD with the hormones mm -hmm. and honestly, everything with a tiny bit of hormones, it just messes me up. Mm -hmm. I get emotional. My belly is extremely bloated, like yeah. extremely. I do not feel good. I just don't feel myself. It's crazy. So then I did the copper IUD without the hormones, which is very heavy on your period. It's, it's not fun, but I do feel I don't have like hormones in my body. So I yeah. do feel more balanced, which is really nice. For me, I've been on birth control for a long time, the pill form. I went on the IUD as well, probably only a couple months ago, and it just was not working for my body. It was not meshing well. I don't know if the mm. hormones were too strong or, I don't know, but the periods were kind of off. It just, I could tell, again, being so in tune with your body of what's working and what, what, what's not. Yeah. So I did get it removed and then went back on my even lower dosage of hormones. I'm like the lowest, lowest you can be on for pill form. And that seems to be working. I think honestly, this is also, you need to find it out because some mm -hmm. friends 
they love the hormone yeah. pop or the IUD and stuff. So it's just like trying things out and I know it's super uncomfortable, but uh, yeah. That's the thing I think I've learned so much is we want it to happen really fast. Like figure it out, like me, like doing the IUD and then getting removed. I was so frustrated that I wasn't figuring out what was working, but it really yeah. is such a journey. I mean, going from since I was 17 and started this till now, it's like you go through so many transitions of figuring out what works for you because you want it for the long run. You know, this isn't like a quick thing you're trying to figure out. No, so. definitely. I mean, there were a lot of questions for this. Let's try different things. Ask your doctor too, because sometimes yeah. they know more about what might fit for you, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And I also know like all the doctors when I came here in the US, like they were like, what? You have a cup IUD, it's so bad, blah, blah. And I was really? like, well, hormone is not good either. I just feel, this is the thing. At the end, I feel every kind of birth control is not really good. Exactly. Like, it's not, it's not gonna do it's anything. Like you but, <laughs> yeah, this but is like, great. I'm like, it. <laughs> it's the best option. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> if you guys have any other questions for us, then please ask us in the comments down below. Yes, let us know. This was super fun. I don't know if you guys are eating with us too, but cheers to brunch. Cheers. Don't forget to follow Sammy and don't forget to follow me as well. We will be back soon with a lot of like live workouts, hopefully more chats and just let us know what you would like to see from us as yeah. well. Okay, love you guys. Bye.